What's tonight's topic? What's it? What are we speaking on? Uh, what is Dharma? It's a Vedic perspective. It's this book, Nitya Dharma. Um, can you tell me your names? I already know Petro. What's your name, madam? Gayatri. Bhakti vihina parada lakshya chittis chaka madi taranga madi kripa maitam saranam prapade brinde namaste charana rinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Can you sing as well as play or? Can you sing nicely or? No, you can sing better I think. <laughs> Okay, this is Mahamantri, if you don't know, it's on this last page of that book. Hare Rama, Hare
As much as you can, maybe some new concepts you don't understand, can ask, no problem. So I'll try not to make it too simple because already here people have interest in philosophy. Thank you Will for having us, very kind. You're very kind to give us some space, some chance. So tonight's topic is what is Dharma? So Dharan. Is in simple language, quality. Everything is identified by its quality, by its characteristics. You know? Like this floor. It's characterized by its dark. moving or unmoving is identified by its characteristics. Right now, mm -hmm. friend from school, I haven't seen him for 30 years. <laughs> because the glories of Facebook, we are now reconnected. Mm -hmm. So everything we see, everything we experience, especially ourselves, is characterized by Dharma. So it means inseparable quality, inseparable, something which you cannot separate from an object. So in Sanskrit, object is called vastu. So every vastu, every thing, is qualified by its qualities. So, the soul also has its qualities, its consciousness. So, here we're tonight talking about what is Nitya Dharma. So happens this book is called Nitya Dharma. Nitya Dharma means eternal Dharma, eternal quality of the soul, can never be separated. It can be covered, it can be distorted, but it can never be removed. For example, if we take water in its natural state, it's liquid. But if you put it in a freezer, then that Dharma comes in a transformed manner, that is called Trisarga. Trisarga transformation. So if you put the water in the freezer it becomes takes on an opposite nature. To be liquid is still there even in an, even in its transformed state. Right? It can be in the freezer for a thousand years, but you take it out, again 
that Dharma will again manifest when there's some favorable background, some favorable opportunities. Right? So, now, unfortunately, we cannot understand the Dharma of the soul, because by nature we are now captured by illusion. If one is captured by illusion, it's quite impossible to understand what is beyond illusion, because you're captured there. So to understand the nature of the soul in its pure state, then we have to go to the scripture. Right? Good fortune tonight, Gayatri is with us. <laughs> so it said, we have two mothers. One is the Gayatri, the Gayatri Mantra. By chanting Gaya, it becomes liberated, Trayati. So by the Gayatri Mantra, Gayatri, one becomes liberated, and the Veda, and the Vedic scriptures. These are two mothers. Unfortunately, these days people have no faith in revealed scriptures. Whatever may be the cause of that, maybe people see the misbehavior of so-called spiritual leaders and they throw the baby out with the bathwater. No, but still, without the help of our mother, we cannot understand our identity. So the scriptures, these two mothers, the Gayatri Mantra, and the Vedas, they describe things which are now beyond our experience, but are true. One time, our Gurudev's Gurudev, his name was Bhakti Pradyan Kesavaj, great Vedic scholar, great. He's, the Vedanta was his life and soul. But also he has so much love for Krishna. Inside, outside like a coconut, he appears very hard, but inside very soft, very sweet. So one time he was on the train in India. Has anyone been to India here? So there are people called ticket collectors. <laughs> Very rarely you can see them, but they exist. <laughs> so one time the ticket collector came and our Gurudev was there on the train and his Gurudev was there. Then the ticket collector asked, Swamiji, where are you going? He said, we are going to Vrindavan, the birthplace of Krishna. Then the ticket collector said, I do not believe in any Vishnu Smishnu. <laughs> exact words. I do not believe in any Vishnu Smishnu. Seeing is believing. And our Gurudev's Gurudev, immediately he said, that is not true, many things you believe which you have never seen. Then ticket collector asked, <laughs> for example, and he asked, who was your father? <laughs> ticket collector could understand what was coming. <laughs> so he began to weep. Okay, in India, even the ticket collector. How you know he is your father? What is the proof? When, who placed us in the wombs of our mother? We were not there to experience that. But who was there? Mother was there. So mother tells you, daughter, this is your father. So by the taking assistance from authority, from someone in a higher position, we can understand something about ourselves that we cannot experience in our present conditions. So unfortunately, people these days have become mostly atheistic, and new scriptures are popping up like mushrooms in the rainy season. <laughs> but really, Gayatri and Veda, these are two mothers. They will tell you, who is your supreme father? But by our own sense perception, what can we understand by sense perception? Or mental speculation? Not because at the end of the day, the mind and the senses, these only have jurisdiction in the material world. But what is beyond matter, what is beyond time, mind and senses have no power to enter that. Therefore, tarke na it says. Logic, argument, and sense perception, seeing, smelling, tasting, hearing, touching, feeling, hoping, wishing, thinking, guessing, <laughs> these have no power to understand transcendental subject matter. Transcendental means will, no, matter, right? Yeah. Transcendental means what? <laughs> beyond the Same. senses yeah, and beyond. beyond the mental. So we are tonight discussing something. Now we cannot Now we cannot experience. No? But if we follow the directions of the Veda and the Gayatri, you will experience it you will experience. So, the, the soul, 
we're talking soul has an eternal nature that is called nitya dharma what is that nitya dharma that nitya dharma is only one thing service love service and love is the same thing if you love someone you serve them. like you have children Who? Children? Husband? Still with husband? Yes. Thank God. You love your husband? Yes. Then hold on. Everyone is doing some sell, some service, you know, for parents, for their own children, you know, and for the society, the social welfare workers. Even the most selfish person in existence, he's also serving. If you find Mr. Selfish, he's doing everything for his own, for the mind, or for the senses, or for the body. He's also serving. So there is no one who can live one moment without service. There is no one. Everyone and everything is performing some function, some service. So this is the nature of the soul. But unfortunately, like the water put into ice, when the soul comes to this material world, that pure dharma, that nitti dharma, this nitti dharma has many other names, gotcha. Sanatan dharma, you've heard of that? Everyone heard of Sanatan dharma? Can you put up your hand? Gotcha, can put up your hand. Sanatan dharma. You know, Sanatan dharma means, like some people say, are you Hindu? Are you Hare Krishna? We say, no. we are followers of Sanatan dharma. That dharma which has no beginning, that dharma which has no end. Sadatan, which is always existing. So tonight we are talking about Jaiva Dharma, the Dharma of the soul. In real simple language, Dharma means occupation. So when the soul comes to this world, its pure nature never lost. You know, like the water, even though put in the freezer, it still remains. It's not, but it becomes covered. You know? Even though it's now in a transformed state, the real nature still exists. So when the soul, which is spiritual by nature, Matt, the soul has no connection with the body or mind. Can you believe that? Mm -hmm. ah. So that soul, when it comes to this world, its pure nature becomes transformed. It means in a simple language, covered. So now what everyone is experiencing that is called naimitic or temporary dharma. Now, Gayatri is a mother. <laughs> but, that will not be eternal occupation. Maybe next life you'll be a man. You know? or maybe, I don't put the evil eye on, but you know, yeah. someone says, I'm a doctor, but that is not eternal. If you lose your job or retire, then that occup occupation is also lost. You know? So in this world, what everyone calls their identity, their mater material identity, their material dharma, this is all called anitya or naimitic temple. You know, one time there was a famous resistance leader of India. His name was Subhas Chandra. No, what was his name? Subhas Chandra Bose. Bengali. Yeah. Because Bengali is making all trouble. <laughs> We're living with some now. I'll tell him the story tonight. He was a, many people think Mahatma Gandhi got rid of the British. It wasn't. It was Sri Chandra Bose. You know, by his armed resurrection against the British. So, that time my Guru Dev's guru, guru, his name was Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. So he had started this mission, we call it, the teachings of presenting the teachings of Krishna to the world. And that's sort of like regulated manner. So he came to meet with, this is Chandra Bose, came to meet with, we call him Prabhupada, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. Hello, what's going on? We have a technical failure. Technical Okay, don't worry. Yes. <laughs> don't worry. Oh. Technical failure. How do you go? My voice is like got a little sick. So, this great, like, militant, anti-British, pro-independence in India, he came to meet with 
but it's an answers what he told. So he said, you are collecting many young men <coughs> to become monks and sannyasis and all this. So you should spare a few for our fighting, the fighting of the British, because our goal is independent India. So Prabhupada said a few things, we're all vegetarian and weak, so cast your glance somewhere else. <laughs> he said that to him. But finally he said, listen, now you think I'm Indian, I'm fighting for the cause of independent India. That is your dharma. What is your real eternal nature, your eternal goal, your eternal occupation? This the desire to liberate India this isn't just a temporary desire, a temporary manifestation. Then he became silent. And for a long time he was thinking, he said, I have never thought so, so deeply about the matter. I will come back at a later date. But he never came back. So now what we're identifying, I am woman, I am man, no, I am heterosexual, I am gay, I am something else, I am a doctor, I am a lawyer, I am Indian, I'm an American, I'm Chinese, I'm Brahmin, I'm Sudra, I'm happy, I'm sad, I'm wealthy, I'm poor. This is all called an Anikya Dharma, temporary Dharma. You know. so even, now I'm trying not to offend anyone, but from a very neutral point of view, we can examine all the religions that we see running about at the moment. These also have a beginning. How old is Christianity, man? 2022. 2022. Right. <laughs> Before that, no one had heard of Christianity. Islam, 1,600 or something. Before the appearance of Muhammad, no one had heard anything, a religion called Islam. No. Buddhism, Gautam Buddha, 1,800 years ago. Before the appearance of Buddha, Gautam Buddha, there was no such thing as Buddhism. So, from a neutral point of view, we want to look anything which these days people are calling religion, even nationalism. How old is Australia? Billions and billions of years. Ago. Right. But the modern thing we see going on, 220 years. Before that, no one had heard of Australian nationalism. Because what? Anyway, I'm going to get into trouble here. But <laughs> will also have an end. So tonight we're discussing Niti Dharma, you know, the eternal Dharma of the soul, the eternal nature of the soul. So whatever is passing now as Dharma or occupation, this is all temporary. You know, it has a beginning and has an end. But what is the Dharma of the soul? We want to talk about that thing. You know? So many people know there is a soul, but when you ask what is the nature of the soul, <coughs> what does the soul do? Everything must have a purpose. <coughs> Excuse me. Everything must have a purpose. Everything has a dharma. So what is the dharma of the soul? What is the purpose of the soul? Then most people remain quiet. So most people imagine, well, when the soul is emancipated from material existence, Gaiji, what do you think happens when you achieve liberation? Spit it out. Tell me. Huh? Mukti. What is mukti? What is liberation? You're free. And once you're free, what will you do then? The end of suffering. And once you finish suffering, what will you do then? Love. Be what? Eternal. Eternally doing what? Nothing. Problem. That means that you're saying the soul has no nature, no activities. No purpose. Cessation of material existence. You said it yourself. Mukti he banditam rupam. No? Atyant duk navriti. Mukti. Mukti means the cessation of all misery. So most people, they think, well, the perfection of Dharma will come at the stage of liberation. No? Either merging with the Brahman, merging with Brahma Jyoti, liberation, or in Buddhism, the cessation of material existence. No? Many, many people have this idea of liberation. And it, in its own place, it may be true. But tonight, we're putting forward a new point 
We hope people can catch it. Liberation is not eternal. Come in, mother. You are late. Radha Kund, criminal activity. Thank you for coming. So, just like lighting a lamp, how long it takes to light a lamp? Five seconds. So, the lighting of the lamp is not eternal. Right? The burning of the lamp, that is eternal. So actually achieving liberation is not eternal because that takes one second. But once you're liberated, what are the activities of liberation? What is the data of the soul after liberation? This is the eternal thing. So unfortunately, most people think, 99% of people think, and they're not to blame because how they can understand something beyond illusion. They think the soul will merge, the soul will finish its existence. And simple, if the soul merges, the soul does not exist anymore. So the so-called Advaita Vadis merging with Brahman and the Buddhist goal of self-annihilation or Nirvana, this is exactly the same thing. You know, even though people try to make so many arguments between Buddhism and the theory of non-duality, they're actually completely the same thing. Both negate the existence of the soul after liberation. No. Why? Because existence is suffering. If you do not exist, you do not suffer. But the great problem comes, Radhakund, if you don't exist, how can you feel happiness? So there must be existence after liberation, otherwise there's no feelings of bliss. No. That means after liberation, the soul still exists. No. So this is very confidential. Maybe people cannot understand, but think about it in a neutral manner and deep manner. We cannot think that liberation, the cessation of existence of the soul, is the solution to all our problems. What do you think, man? Protracted from what? That it, this, mm. this point. That it's the solution to our problems? Many people think cessation of the existence of the soul, that will be the solution to all material miseries. But if you don't exist, how can you feel any real happiness? So tonight, no, in a very gentle way, even though I'm not a gentle person, <laughs> we are placing in the feet of the audience, try to think in a broad manner. The cessation of the individual soul, which people call liberation, this cannot be either eternal nor give real happiness. No. So unknown to people, there are actually five types of liberation mentioned in the scripture. People don't read the scriptures, therefore they don't know. So it said, what is it? Long time. Because in COVID, no, <laughs> in COVID, we never gave any lectures. So it's a little hard. Salokya Shusi Sarup Ekatpi Apyuta Dia Mana Nagrina Bina Mat Sevanamjana. Bhagavad Puran mentioned this very confidential topic. No? There are actually five types of liberation. And the liberation of Sayuja Mukti, merging, this is actually considered the worst. This is actually rejectable for intelligent persons because it's one type of spiritual suicide. Just like Raghunath Goswami said, Mukti Kata Vyagra Nasuni. Vyagra means what? Remember your primary school Sanskrit, Ms. Gayatri? I don't know any Sanskrit. That's right. Of a tiger. <laughs> in other words, you do anything to avoid going in the mouth of a tiger. Because one who goes in the mouth of a tigress never comes out. Unless stool or something. <laughs> Technically, one who goes in there never comes out. So this talk of liberation, of merging, is like the mouth of a tigress. So intelligent person should try to avoid this type of discussion, this type of thinking, at all costs. No? So the Saswat Shastras, the devotional scriptures, mention there are also four other types of liberation. You know Hanuman, of course, got you, right? Yes, sir. Hanuman eternally doing what? Let's we'll hug. Your mother would cry if she could watch you. <laughs> <laughs> what is Hanuman eternally doing? What are you, loving Rama? Serving Rama? Yes. These are also different types of liberation. So tonight we want to present a new idea that what is the real concept of liberation means a loving relationship with the Supreme Lord. If you become one with God, there is no one left to serve Him. There is no one left to love. No? 
William, do you want to become chocolate or taste chocolate? Do you want to become bliss or taste bliss? I would like to become bliss, please. If you become bliss, you cannot taste it, because there have to be two. Now, this may be different from what you are reading or hearing, but we are trying to push the barriers of your mind without snapping it. <laughs> please, my eyes never come back here again. <laughs> you don't want to snap. But this idea is a very new idea. Not new, it's there since eternity, but people may be hearing it for the first time. No? Love means two. No? Relationship means two. Service means two. Tasting, experiencing means two. Well, technically, it means three. There must be a taster, the tasted, and the act of tasting. There must be the experiencer, that which is experienced, and the act of experiencing. There must be the lover, the beloved, and the act of loving. There must be the master, the servant, and the act of service. So who accepts these three principles? They can also understand all this niti dharma. So three things are eternal. The individual soul we call Atma. What's your name, sir? Anthony. Huh? Anthony. Anthony. Okay. The soul is eternal. No. We should not think the soul began with this body. Don't think like that. No. Soul has no... Soul exists before time, beyond time. No. There was never time we did not exist. No. In Bhagavad Gita's second chapter, when Arjuna was giving many arguments, how can I fight, how can I kill my relatives? No. Then what Krishna said when Arjuna surrendered. Arjuna, you are speaking very foolish words. No. I will kill, he will kill, I will be killed. This is all rubbish. No. Because the wise lament neither for the living or the dead. There was never a time when I did not exist, you did not exist, and all these kings, there was never a time they did not exist also. So the soul is one Sanatan Vastu. Sanatan Vastu means eternal principle, eternal object, soul, individual soul. And the other individual souls also are eternal existing. Will, there was never a time you exist, not, did not exist. There was never a time I did not exist. So you'll never become me. I will never become you. Many people present the theory, there's only one Atma, Ek Atma Vat. But this is not true in our experience. No? If I have a headache, why doesn't Gayatri have a headache? No, so. The individual existence of all the individual souls, this is one fact. The soul can never merge, the soul can, soul's existence can never be extinguished. Sometimes it might appear so, just like a green parrot flies into a green tree. A foolish person may think the parrot has lost his existence. No, he's still there existing. So even if there is some incredible thing called merging with the Brahman, which actually no one has ever achieved, because if he had achieved it, there would be no one left to describe it. <laughs> like the good old Dalai Lama. Right? This is his 14th incarnation as the Dalai Lama. But if the Dalai Lama had actually achieved Buddhist liberation, he would not exist anymore. Right? So the question comes, who's coming back 14 times? That means the soul never actually merges, the soul never ceases to exist. It may appear temporarily, like a green bird going in a tree, but he's still there. No? So the soul is eternal. No? And tonight, maybe you're hearing the first time, the supreme soul, they call Paramatma. Right? We are Atma, soul, but God, he is called Paramatma, supreme soul. Soul can be called Brahman, but God, he is called Parabrahman, the supreme soul. So we'll call him Krishna, <laughs> because I'm like Krishna. Krishna, there was never a time he did not exist, also. So the individual soul, the supreme soul, and the relationship between the soul and the supreme soul, well, these three things are eternally existing. Okay, so Gayatri, who are you? Are you really born in Mumbai? Are you really a mother of two? No. Who are you? Supreme soul. You are not the supreme soul. You are the individual soul. <laughs> <laughs> How can you say you are the supreme soul, the source of everything, and the creator of everything? No, not the because we have many desires which we cannot fulfill. This is proof we are not the supreme soul. 
Okay, so don't say that again. Can't talk a lot. Did I say that? <laughs> so, there is one verse from our main scripture, it's called the Bhagavad Purana. No? So, Veda Nigama Kalpa Taro Kalatam Falam Sukha Mukhat Amrita Dravita Samhita. All the Veda is like a tree. So, the fruit of the tree is called this book, the Srimad Bhagavatam. You've heard of it? Gayatri, Gayatri, what have you been doing? <laughs> we have one book. We only brought one book with us. That is called Chaitanya Shiksha Brita. Come in. Why is <laughs> No secret entrance from the back for you. Okay, so there is one verse. This, is cons- this explanation of this verse is considered performed in the other 18,000 verses. Savai pumsam paro dharma yatir bhakti adoksaje ahoitiki apatiya yatma samprasitati. Savai pumsam paro dharma. Someone who lives in a house is called pumsam. So the soul is now living in the house of the material body. So all of us are called pumsam. Even some souls, like dogs, cats, Trees, grasses, birds, demigods, devas, deities, dhanavas, demons, soul is there. So, the soul in any condition of material existence, this soul is called Pumsam because now inhabiting a material body. Are you the body, Matt? No. Are you the body? No. Are you the mind? No. Who are you? Don't know. Soul. Okay. Soul. That soul is called Pumsam. So, Savai Pum San Paro Dharma. What is the supreme Dharma for all souls? There cannot be two or five or twenty or fifty Dharmas. No, the truth must be one. So, what is that? Matt saying nicely, we don't know, so we have to believe in the mother. Mm-hmm. So, mother's telling us, you are all servants of Krishna. Savai Pum San Paro Dharma. Yati and Bhakti Adoksaja. Bhakti means what we are practicing. No? Yoga. Yoga means. To join two things together, that is called yoga, yukt karma, to do yoga. Why there are so many different yogas, Matt? Will? Why there are so many different yogas? Because people have many, many different desires. If someone has some desire to fulfill in the material world, they follow karma yoga. If someone has no desires in the material world and wants freedom from birth and death, then they follow jnana. Astanga, Raj, Raj Yoga, all the same thing. Their goal is liberation, you know, freedom from birth and death. But for a few souls, they are not satisfied simply by the idea of liberation. So they go beyond liberation, <laughs> beyond Nirvana. And what is that? That is an inconceivable state called Prema. The Prema means spontaneous love between two transcendental objects. The individual soul and the supreme soul, Krishna. So, Savai Pum Sam Paro Dhamma, Yatir Bhakti, that is called Bhakti. Bhakti means, Baj, Baj Datu in Sanskrit means to serve. So, when the soul's tendency to serve God, Krishna, as soon as you say God, many people become disturbed. So, we'll just say his name. <laughs> Krishna. God is actually the position, but what everyone who has a position also has a name. If we look in the Judaic Christian scriptures, now there's no name of God mentioned. Don't argue. No, it's, it's very confusing. It's not So if you don't even know God's name, or his form, or his qualities, or his activities, what's God doing in the spiritual world? And the souls who have achieved freedom from birth and death, what are they doing there? <laughs> These things, of course, now are impossible for us to understand. Therefore, we have to go to the scriptures. We have to go to the mother, and she will give all this information. That is called bhakti. Spontaneous and transcendental attraction between God and the individual soul, that is called prema. So we are practicing bhakti yoga, the yoga of service. Okay. So in its pure state, don't look at me, for example, the pure state of the soul, that loving performance of devotion, of service, will be uninterrupted 
Even Gayatri, when she sleeps, she has a six hour break from her children. Right? So I'm not saying you're a bad mother. <laughs> but that love has some break, some interruption. But the soul, in its pure state, that loving flow of favorable service towards Krishna, that is uninterrupted. Guru Maharaj say, like a stream of honey from a jar, never broken. And also, most importantly, there is no cause for that. There is no reason, no business, no negotiation. Why they are serving Krishna? Only one reason, one cause. What is that cause, Gayatri, for 10,000 bhakti points? <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Love. 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 They do not desire anything from Krishna. We cannot even imagine such a condition in our present miserable condition. So the, in simple language, in its pure state, the soul content, continuously, uninterruptedly performs loving service to please Krishna, for no, and there is no desire for any remuneration. Only one desire, may you be happy, imagine. That thing will attract Krishna. That is called perfection, that is called bhakti yoga. Of course, now everyone is even doing some worship or some devotion. They go to the church, the synagogue, or the mosque, or the yoga center, and what do they want? Give me something in return. Give me dharma, arta, karma, or moksha. Matt, you still with us? Yeah. Dharma. Many people doing religion for some, I want to go to heaven. Not pointing fingers at Islam or Christianity. <laughs> Though it's a little bit unavoidable in such discussions. They're doing some, yes, we will sacrifice something in this world, but our goal is unlimited material pleasure in the next. Like in Islam, what is their goal? Unlimited sexual enjoyment. So this is called dharma. In Islam they call jhana, in Hinduism they call swarga, in Christianity it's called paradise. <laughs> but the goal is the same. I'm doing something in this world, but my goal is what I sacrifice here, I'll be repaid thousands of times more in the next existence. This is called dharma. This is just a business. I'll give something up now, but you've got to pay me back with interest at the end. <laughs> this is a materialistic religion. No, dharma, Atta. I'm doing something, but I want some wealth. No? Jai Dagadish Hari, <laughs> give me your house by the sea. Oh God, I'm doing something for you, but you have to give me something back. No? In the form of wealth, or good health, or nice wife, or good children. This is all Atta. You want something, some wealth. And with wealth, what do you do? Fulfill desire, that is called Kaam. So Dharma, Atta, Karma and Moksha, liberation. These four are all called cheating religion. Even I say this, I feel shame. Who can accept this loving service to Krishna, the idea of Sanatana Dharma? Only that person who gives up these four types of cheating religion. Who can become free, free from the disease? The diabetic patient goes and the doctor says what? Don't eat any more Mars bars or Tim Tams or chocolate bars. The patient who can give up that thing, they can become free from the disease. No? So this Bhagavad Purana, it says, Dharma Prochita Koitava Trapadamaniya Matsadanam Who can hear this? Already probably two-thirds of the audience think, this is crazy, I'm never coming for this. Right? The idea of giving up all these things, then what will be left for me? There will be nothing left. The people think like that. No? But who can give up these four type of mixed religions? Because you're doing something, but you want something back in return. Four type of prostitution, spiritual prostitution, spiritual business. Who can give up these four things, or well, maybe cannot give them up, but at least understand these will not give any real happiness to me. Those persons can accept this idea of continuous service to Krishna. Okay. So why Krishna comes to this world? Many people have bad conception of Krishna. Even if you go to the Oxford Dictionary, what does it say? Krishna, brackets, mythological figure. Comes to this world. Krishna says. What is that? Yada yada hi dharmasya gani bharati bharata. Remember? Abhuta snama dharmasya? 
Tadatma Jam Sri Jam Yaham. Krishna says, I come to this world to establish Dharma. What Dharma? This Sanatan Dharma. No? The Dharma of eternal attraction to Krishna. No? Okay, so Krishna comes to this world. When Krishna comes to this world, he comes with the liberated souls. His mother and father. Can God have a mother and father? Will, Matt? <laughs> Can God have a mother and father? Think carefully. If he's unlimited, he can have whatever he wants. Sure. <laughs> Who is to deny him or limit him? Sure. Actually, God has no mother and father. But if you want to serve him like a son, he can give you that position. Yes, I accept. I reciprocate. What you want, I will give you, because there's no material thing. So Krishna gives that position to the persons, those persons who want this, who desire only his service. Krishna gives that position to the souls. I will become your son. I will become your beloved. I will become your friend. I will become your master. These four relationships. Das, Sakya, Batsali, and Madhur. Now, any happiness in this world that you find is in this four. But in this world, that relation at the end will always give suffering and misery. But still, like the affection of mother for child, where it comes from? In its pure state, where does it does it exist in a pure state? That is in the kingdom of God. You know? The attraction between man and woman. Right? The highest happiness in the material world. Right? Where it comes from? What's its origin? If everything comes from God, it will also be in Him. So those souls who desire that type of relationship, I will serve you like that. Then Krishna also can give that position to you. you know? So devotion is very powerful. If you want to serve him only for his happiness, then he accepts and he gives such a position to the devotee. No? So this is the science of bhakti yoga, no? Nitya dharma. Are there any questions from the people? Madam, you have any questions? Ready? Okay, so try. Question. Yes? <laughs> well. um, can you explain the relationship between Shiva and Krishna? Okay. Mm. Shiva's always meditating. Who is he thinking of? So my understanding of Shiva is that which is not death. No, Shiva exists. Why it doesn't exist? Mm. Shiva exists, sure he exists. Yes, so can you explain the relationship between Krishna and Shiva? Is Krishna is, is Krishna what? is Shiva the source of Krishna? What's Shiva always doing? Twenty four hours a day. He's always meditating. That means he is absorbed in someone who is superior to him. You never see a picture anywhere of Krishna. Man. There he is, Shiva on the back. There he is. What's he doing 24 hours? That means he is absorbed in meditation upon his master. There's no picture of anywhere, Krishna meditating. <laughs> because Krishna's only one business is enjoying. No? Nice question. So, in simple language, Shiva is the servant of the Supreme Lord and Krishna is his master. But Shiva, I understand Shiva as the source of all existence. In one sense, he's the source of all material existence. In one sense. No? What can I say? Bill Gates. Do you think when was the last time Bill Gates even did a He has so much money, he just pays others to do it. What's the master? If someone's a real master, a real boss, what's their only business? Enjoy. Enjoy. No. Where's Bill Gates? He's probably playing golf in the Bahamas somewhere. There's one famous story. That one, he was Muslim king, but very broad-minded. His name was Akbar. So he said to the... He was very liberal-minded also, apart from making up his own religion, but that's another thing. No. So he said to all the Brahmins, the Pandits, I want to see a presentation of Hinduism. I want to see. So everyone became busy. They made like Murti of Shiva, Murti of Ganesh, Murti. So Akbar was looking at all of them. And he saw a picture of Krishna there. <coughs> he said, this must be God. Why? He had no responsibilities. <laughs> right? What's Krishna doing? Most beautiful woman in the... The most beautiful woman, Radhika, always by his side playing flute, doing little cow grazing. 
He's the only person who has no responsibilities. Because all responsibilities he's given and designated to everyone else. And what's he doing? Enjoying. So, I think even Nietzsche, one favorite, he said, I will only believe in a God who dances. The Shiva dances in the Russia. But even his dance has some cause, the destruction of the creation. So even in dancing, he has some responsibility, some service. But Krishna, no. Fully independent and full enjoyer. There's a book, I don't have it, but I can give you the link. You can read all this. Describe philosophically who he is. Krishna had better things to do than creating, maintaining, and destroying because he's enjoying in the spiritual world. So I'm using material language. Some fault will be there in understanding. No? So in very simple language, you can think Krishna take these forms of Brahma, Vishnu, and Mahesh, Shiva for the function of creation, maintaining, and destroying. But he himself is completely separate from that. His desire has become these forms. Do this. Or in a simple language, he's given his power to these three. Perform these functions. But he only enjoys. So Shiva is a servant. There are many ways to see Shiva. No? But we see him like Guru. Well, you see he has no interest in any material things. He's fully absorbed in meditation upon Krishna. I want to be like that. So we pray to him like Guru, and what we ask him for, just give me one blessing, devotion to Krishna, love for Krishna. What is that? Vrindavana Vanapati Jaya Soma Soma Moli Samaka Sanatana Nada Nada Deya Nada Deya Nada Deya Yeah, you can't remember it. Yogi Brit 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 You guess what a Brajabha Lassi Yuga Mripati Oh Shiva who always have a moon in his forehead who is always surrounded by the four Kumaras, Nada and Nadas, no? You always, Vrindavan of Anapati, you are always meditating on the Pati, the Lord of Vrindavan. Oh Shiva, bless me with Prema, Nirupati, Prema means without any other material desire. You bless me with that type of love for Krishna. So we also worship Shiva. No? Shiva is one, but people see him in many ways according to what they want or their present understanding. But the best understanding, he is like devotee. There's a verse in the Bhagavad Purana, like Ganga is the greatest of rivers. No? Like the Bhagavad is the greatest, the greatest of the Puranas, that's the book we're speaking about tonight. No? Like Janardhan, Krishna is the topmost of all the devas. Vaishnavanam Yatasambhu, Lord Shiva is the best devotee of vision. We see him like that. No? But people argue because scriptures say different things because scriptures also have different categories. No, sattvic, rajasic, and tamasic. So, tamasic scriptures are also there for those of that nature. Do people in India worship Shiva as God? Some? Yes. Yeah. Some do. Yeah. But that would be a mistake. <laughs> but isn't Krishna an avatar of Vishnu anyway? So uh, step by step. Yeah. <laughs> what is the meaning of Vishnu? Vishnu means who pervades everything. Yes. So yes. Krishna is also Vishnu. No harm is there. But still, we believe Krishna has some special things which no other incarnation has. Like one candle ignites thousands of other candles. Each candle has the same burning power. But still, the original candle is still the original candle. So, the Das Avatar, Keshava Dritta Dasavida Rupa. Who has become the Das Avatar? Kesha. Who is Kesha? Krishna. So we believe, we believe like that Krishna is the source of all other incarnations. Be because he has some special thing which no, no other incarnation has. Mm -hmm. Milk and yogurt. Uh, like milk can become yogurt, right? but yogurt can never again become milk. In simple language, Krishna can become Shiva. Krishna can take that form, but Shiva can never again take the form of Krishna. So there's a difference between them. Like milk and yogurt, there's no difference, but still, if you look a little subtly, there, a difference is there. No worry, kind of, it's very, very deep. Everything else is a little easy to understand, but the philosophy of Shiva is very difficult. So the thing is, yeah. Very subtle. In my mind, you know, to think of uh, that which is beyond creation, and think of that as the source of existence, the source of... So Shiva, in one sense, the source of material existence, but all, including spiritual existence, no. Shiva also have a power. Every universe has a Shiva. You know that? Well, I would say that 
pervades all the universes, right? But he's not the source of the universes. The source of all. So he is not. He is not. He's not the source. He's not the. Vedanta Sutra describe all these things clearly. No soul can become God because the individual soul cannot create the universes. No, I forget. I'll look it up. No, Shristam Vajitam Vedanta says. The souls, no one else can create universes. Only Bhagavad, only Vishnu has that power. You know, if you believe in Vedanta, but you can read, you can study. No, that's not what I believe. Uh-huh. I understand. <coughs> There's because, because scriptures, right? We were talking last night, I'm staying with some Bengali families, so all these things we were talking last night. No. Everyone know what is Sapagun, Rajagun, Tamagun? Mm-hmm. What's his name there? Our friend, what's your name, sir? Anthony. Anthony, mm-hmm. right? So, ignorance, <coughs> passion, and goodness. This morning we were talking in our walk. What does Krishna say? What's wrong with you? He always says, he goes, well, he goes, I've heard this before, off button. Remember this morning we asked you, what's that verse Krishna oh, says? Prakriti Krishna Krishna Guna Karmani Sarvasa. Krishna says, one who sees these three in action, and these three is doing everything, this person has real knowledge. Goodness, passion, and ignorance. Right? Some people controlled by the mode of ignorance. Intoxication, sleep, violence, their foodstuffs, even their waking hours. Right? We were just in Melbourne, one boy who lived in the house. All day sleeping and all night video games. Yeah. This means fully ignorant. No? Daytime high like an hour, and nighttime come up. So persons who are controlled by ignorance, they'll be violent. What else? Angry. Angry. Playing, disturbed, disturbing others, dirty, yeah. intoxication, excessive sleep, no intelligence, what is good, what is bad, this is ignorance. Sometimes even all of us, in one day we go through the bad period, the good period. Passion, some people full of desire, this is called rajagun, passion. And sattvagun, sattvagun means peaceful, no? in control of the mind and senses, no? feeling happiness. And beyond that is Nirgun, which is beyond these three. So the scripture, the Vedic scriptures also of three types, four types. Ignorance, passion, and goodness. Have you got a chance? Do you have Bhagavad Gita at home? Uh, no, I don't. We'll arrange one for you. 17th <laughs> chapter. You can it's read. so complicated. It's like for me reading. <laughs> no, 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 no. You have to hear it. I have to hear. It's not complicated. You'll be fine. You're vegetarian, right? Not yet. Uh, That's why it's a little hard. <laughs> <laughs> because That's meat, the only reason, is it? <laughs> meat means ignorance. <laughs> meat means ignorance. <laughs> no? uh, meat, brings in, in, in. meat is ignorance. Violence, selfishness, all these bad things come from eating meat. So if you're eating that stuff, then that will be in the mind predominating. Then how you'll understand all these things? No. So, so therefore, scriptures also of four types. Those, there are special scriptures for those who are fully in ignorance. There are scriptures for that. No. That's what you're presently now. Do that. Follow that. And those persons who go, look, it says here, look. Yeah. Okay, it says, but for who? For that class of man, that class of persons. No. Then passion, those who have many, many desires. I want this, I want that. How to fulfill these other those desires? Then follow this thing, that is passion. And there are some people who have no interest in material desires. They want liberation. That is mode of goodness. What about sometimes I feel like I'm all those people? Yeah, we that is the problem, no? <laughs> Even in one day, sometimes pa- ignorance, sometimes passion, sometimes a little peaceful goodness, but not for long then again. Mm. So the problem is how to transcend those three. How to transcend those three? Then that person who wants to give up these three, they'll be attracted to a completely separate category of scripture. That is the Bhakti Shastras, the Saswat Shastras. No? Like Bhagavad Puran, this Bhagavad Gita, these things which talk only about devotion and no other topic. But who will be attracted to those? Not these persons in goodness, passion, or anything. I think the scriptures are essential. Because 100%. Is mother is mother is mother essential? 
this is my, my question, right? Because I, the way I think about BAFTA is complete. I can say that I've had some very intense BAFTA moments in my life. You know, moments of complete. But what scripture says, then you'll have to measure your experience about what the scriptures describe. Then you're going to run into trouble. But for me, reading a book is not... These are not books. These are the realizations of perfected souls. Like Vyasadeva. Yes. Like Valmiki. So. But I mean, the, They're thing, not the, the thing is to experience it. How are you going to experience it unless you follow? But I didn't. This is the thing. It was a moment of following. Okay, you're following experiencing it. something, but that is the highest standard? No. Mm. That is the perfect standard? No. Like the kid makes a finger painting. Look, Mom, what I did. Oh, great. But where is that and where is the real standard? No. That's why Scripture helps. Because Scripture will always, what is your goal and how do you achieve it? If you don't follow scripture, you cannot understand where I'm going and how to get there. The great misfortune, people have no belief in scriptures. That would be misfortune. Is there an over-attachment to scripture? No, sir. That is always given. In a very high thing, in a very high stage of pure devotion to Krishna, the scriptures follow that person. <laughs> there is such a level. The scriptures follow that person. But still, by nature, that person never does or says anything against scriptures. But sometimes the, the devotee on that level, what they speak and realize, even scripture have no experience of that. But that is very high thing. Mm. Like there's one devotee called Udav. You've heard of Udav? Mm. I feel like crying. <laughs> Gayatri, what happened to you? Your grandmother is crying through me. So... Anyway, we can tell a little bit, otherwise we only speak philosophy, then people think this is just dry or taste. So a little bit we can speak tonight. What time do we have to finish? There's no time, I yeah. have to leave at 6 a.m. Okay, we'll we finish way before then, don't worry. Okay, by desire, maybe of Krishna, these topics come, because only philosophy not give any taste. No? So real experience means this taste. So 5,000 years ago, Krishna came to this world with his eternally, eternally perfected souls. No? So where did he appear? He appeared in the village of Brindavan. Who has been there? All are invited. What's your name with glasses, madam? Katerina. Katerina, come. Give up everything. <laughs> <laughs> what do you have? Nothing anyway, right? Come. What's your favorite? What's he saying? Bring baby as well. Come. Anyway, so <clears throat> Brindavan is the topmost holy place in the whole of, whole of the universe. <laughs> Even Brahma, Shiva, they, they pray for that dust of that place. If you read the Bhagavad Purana, all these stories we're telling come from that. You read, Even Brahma, Tadbudi Bhaga, Aho, Ajantam, Kiti Janma, Atav, Yagokana, Pate, Katamangade, Dorobishaka. Brahma, Lord Brahma, head of the universe, he prayed. When I can get this dust of Brindavan on my body, I feel my life is successful. Brahma, pray for this, because that Krishna directly appeared there. No, if you come there, we are lucky we live there. No? You come, we are inviting everyone. Month of Kartik, October 9, till when is it? November 8. November October 9 to the November 8, one month festival. When's your baby due? October 6. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> Or well, you go there and have the baby and bring him on the, on the holy pilgrimage places. <laughs> anyway, even the womb, he's hearing this, he has too much luck. You know? Baby can hear all these things. No? So, Krishna spent that city of 15,000 temples. Every house has temple of Radha. Here, if you dress with Tilak and chant Hari Nam, everyone looks at you like you're weird. But in Vrindavan, you don't have Tilak and not chanting, everyone looks at you like you are weird. <laughs> Top most holy place. So Krishna lived there 12 years, 8 months, 15 days. Really, Krishna never takes one step outside of this place. Because there, devotees have so much natural affection for him. He is God, which all the scriptures say, even that they don't care. He may be God, he may not be God. That is no point for him. He is my son. He is my beloved, he is my friend. This relationship is prominent. Yes, yeah, so what you said. At some stage, even scriptures have to bow their head, their hands to this type of love.
having a lot of a guru so or something your Something is there also. But real guru will never act against one word against the scripture. That is one qualification of the guru also. And high class devotee. Anyway, don't want to go into that. That's a whole minefield. So Krishna stayed there 12 years, 8 months, 15 days. Then he went to other places. But still, he never forget the, the love of those devotees. The, they're called the Brijabhasis, the residents of Vrindavan. They have the highest category of love for Krishna. Even his God, they forget. They just know he is my friend, he is my beloved. So Krishna also cannot forget them, because this means attraction between two. Love means both ways. So there was one great person called Uddhav. He was celibate, very high class of intelligent person. Like they say, he could not find any human being who, could, who was equal to him intelligence. So he accepted the guru of the demigods, Brihaspati, as his guru. So intelligent. No? So he's Krishna's friend. No? He is Krishna's minister. Even Krishna has some problem. He asks Guru, what should I do? <laughs> I mean, how much you can understand how qualified he is. No? Baby, what's baby doing? <laughs> okay. So Krishna, for so many reasons, he could not go back to Vrindavan for some time. So he sent Uddhav there as a messenger. So Uddhav went. And at first, Uddhav thinking, I have so much knowledge of Krishna. I have so much knowledge. So he went there to meet with Krishna's mother and father. They are Nanda and Yasoda. People cannot even imagine God has a form. What to speak of having <laughs> family, mother and father. So, the perfected souls, we call the liberated souls, and the Nitya Siddhas, the eternally perfected souls. We are in the very bad category of eternally bound. <laughs> we are always here. We always forget Krishna. We have forgotten him since time without beginning. But those souls never forget him. They have never forgotten him. Always with him. That's terribly depressing. Why? Don't think like that. They're in bliss. Being this ah, don't worry. If you practice devotion, you can get out. Oh, okay, but you don't always have to be here. <laughs> okay. But it, we have been, there's never a time we have not been here. You can think like that. So much in ignorance, so much forgetful of our identity. But some souls never forget. They have spiritual bodies just like Krishna. God has a form. Well, God is a person. And they have spiritual forms also, the same as him. Otherwise, how can they serve him unless they're the same as him? Still, there's a difference. He is the master, he is the enjoyer, and they are the enjoyer. So, Uddhav has so much knowledge of Krishna. All the scriptures are in his hand. And he went to meet with Krishna's mother and father. So, when he went there, he saw they just weeping. Simply weeping day and night. We cannot understand this is one type of ecstasy. In this world, if you lose your phone, phone is not with you, but how much you remember. <laughs> Where is it? Where did I put it? You lose your wallet. You lose your mother. How much you remember? Maybe you remember his mother left recently. Maybe think of your mother more now than when you were with her. Yeah. It can. That is the power of love. So Krishna is not there. How much they remember him more than when he is with them directly. So this separation is another type of love, another type of taste another type of affection, another type of bliss. Not like this world when someone dies and we cry and we feel miserable. It's not like that. They're constantly weeping for Krishna. But his inside is one nectar, one taste. But how much they're experiencing when they remember him like that? It's so much experience. You know? Like I heard the poor people in the concentration camps in the Second World War. What would they always talk about? Their favorite meals. <laughs> But that thing is not there, then you become so much more absorbed. So how much they're remembering Krishna, how much thinking of Krishna. But who would have saw how much they're weeping for him? So, Okay, Petro, thank you. Yes, he told me yesterday he would leave early. Take that book with you. I have to come over here. Come tomorrow night if, if you wish. Normally no one ever comes back. <laughs> <laughs> What? Serve forever? No, thank you. So, Uddhav, the point is, Uddhav has so much knowledge. In this world, when someone's suffering, how you remove their suffering? By knowledge. 
like someone dies, what do you say? Really? No one dies. The soul is eternal, only changing bodies. If someone gives an old, up an old and diseased body and goes to a new body, that's a happiness, not a sadness. So by knowledge, you remove people's unhappiness. So what would have saw they're constantly weeping for Krishna? Then he thought, I give them knowledge and remove away their misery. So what did he say? Krishna, Krishna is God. He is all pervading. He has no mother and father. He has no friends. No one is close to him. No one is far away from him. No. Like if someone spins around, when they stop spinning, the world is still moving. So out of affection, you are thinking Krishna to be your son. But no. He is the mother, father, brother, sister, guru of everyone. So don't weep. Krishna is inside and outside everything. Like air. Air is outside my body, air is also inside my body. In the same way, why are you weeping for Krishna? He is inside you, he is outside you, nothing is separate from you. So why you should cry for him? Then Krishna's father hearing. And would have again and again said, You are very fortunate. You have developed such love for Krishna. If someone dies even by accident, like they fall off the roof or they die by snake bite. But still, even for a moment, at the time of death, they can remember him. They become free from all karma, all bad things. So if someone remembers Krishna even by accident, they get so much benefit. And you are always absorbed in thinking of Krishna. How you are fortunate, would have speaking all these things. The all scriptures speak like that. What would have speak? But what Nanda Baba feeling is also mentioned in scriptures. But <laughs> this is a high thing. So Nanda Baba speaking. Udav, I thought you were a very learned person. But now, hearing your words, I understand you are a fool. <laughs> Krishna is not my son. No, I saw him take birth. Directly, he would sit on my lap. I was the one who taught him how to walk. I was the one, all these things. We think we have no experience of God. We also know what is God from the scriptures. God means always pure. But Krishna, never pure. Five, six times a day we change his nappy. <laughs> when Krishna eats, how much food goes all over him? We see. Krishna has none of the symptoms of God. God means always truthful. But we see how much Krishna lies. Baby Krishna. The gopis catch Krishna stealing butter. His mouth is full of butter. The gopis say, are you stealing from my fridge? What do the gopis, what does Krishna say? <laughs> When child lie, lie, this gives so much happiness to parents. When small child lie, right? Like you see on YouTube, kids covered in like cupcake stuff. Did you steal? And, and no one feel angry by that. Everyone laugh. Everyone feel happiness. So generally, to lie as a fault. But when Krishna's, Krishna's lying give happiness to the devotees, it's not considered <coughs> a fault. So Nanda Baba is speaking from his own experience, which is beyond Udav's experience. Udav know Krishna is God. But Nanda Baba, he know Krishna is my son. So his experience, his love is more than Uddha. So Uddha explained, Nanda Baba did not understand anything he said. And when Nanda Baba explained his experience, Uddha also did not understand what he said. <laughs> because one is speaking from the platform of pure prem, pure affection. And Uddha have affection, but this mixed with knowledge. Anyway, did that make you feel good? I don't know. No, not really. <laughs> also, I don't understand why I'm speaking all these things. No, no, I'm very curious. You know, like I'm asking questions because I'm genuinely seeking. So, it's not that scriptures don't describe these things, but they describe some limit. For real experience of these things, it says, "Go to scripture is nice, but all scriptures say at the end of the day you have to go to a high class devotee, someone who's experiencing things. At the end of the day, book gives some knowledge." At the end of the day, you have to go to someone who has this type of realization. Exactly. But that type of devotee is very rare. In this yes. Very like Ramana Maharshi, right? Was He's not a devotee at all. He spent his whole life trying to be God. So I am that. Yes. Actually, he even denied his own existence. Who's asking? He don't even believe in the, he exists anymore. Yes. So this is not devotion. Yes. So what do you think about Ramana Maharshi? This is liberation. Liberation. But we are talking beyond liberation. Ah. Uh -huh. Devotion is another category. Uh, Everything has its place. We should nicely understand gold medal is there, silver medal is there, and bronze medal is there. Mm. So 
So Krishna says, Bhakti Mama Bhajani. You want to understand me? Only by devotion. Ramana, Ramana Mahasri don't even believe God have a form. Mm. This is a thing that um, I would love to ask my guru. I'd like to watch YouTube and see how he answers. <laughs> um, it never made sense to me. You know, the idea of dissolution, of enlightenment as a complete dissolution. That's Ramana Mahasri. You see his death, everything about it. Ultimate death. I guess it's beyond my experience, but I mean, I've had states of uh, where I felt myself disappearing, fall into bliss, moments of complete bliss. So I guess if it's something that equates to that, as a you know, an ultimate. Therefore, we find many, many persons who experienced liberation gave up liberation for love of Krishna, but no one who experienced love of Krishna gave up that for liberation. Yeah. That's why Prema, it, it's called... It's the first time I'm hearing about this yeah. concept. First time I heard it, I also became crazy. Yeah. What is this? That's why no one come. And anyone who here never come back. Because it's too much higher thing. But we have to be a little mature and don't understand. Ask again and again. Read. This is what I'm saying. Yeah, <coughs> so these things have their place. We're not saying liberation doesn't exist. So, so liberation is not the ultimate. For that thing, you'll have to go to other scriptures. Mm. You've never heard of them. Mm. <laughs> There's one book we brought tonight. If you read that nicely, Bhakti Notako says, who reads this book, even if they don't understand it, it will give them so much benefit next life they'll understand it. <laughs> he says like that. No, this is called Panchapurusata, no, the fifth goal of life, Krishna Prem, beyond liberation. Most people can't even understand. There is a thing about liberation. What does understand of there's something beyond it? But there is something beyond it. Liberation is not everything. And what is real liberation? That is love of Krishna. Madhva Chari, all the Chari as I said. So why do I need scriptures to love huh? Krishna? Why do I need scriptures to love Krishna? <coughs> Nowhere else you'll find these type of descriptions of topics of Krishna. Topics of Krishna are the process and topics of Krishna are the goal. Scriptures describe nothing else but topics of Krishna. Yeah, I'm not with the person. Huh? Yeah, I'm not with the person. Even liberated souls can get devotion if they hear. So all the scriptures are doing what? They describe nothing except Krishna's name, form, qualities, and pastimes. And when, when someone achieves perfection, what are they always doing? Speaking and remembering Krishna's name, form, qualities, and pastimes. So the statements of the scriptures and the thoughts of the perfected souls, this is one. But still, always superior to directly go to a living devotee. Because you read scripture, you'll have millions of questions, but who will answer? Only someone who has experienced that love of Krishna will answer all these things. Is there a hierarchy of texts? 100%. Bhagavad Gita. And Bhagavad Gita is considered like primary school. Because in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna, he just says, Sadhava, the conclusion of Bhagavad Gita, give up everything, surrender to me. But what happens after you give up everything and surrender to Krishna? What feelings will come? That is not mentioned in Bhagavad Gita. Krishna said that it's considered the topmost instruction of Bhagavad Gita, 1854. Man mana bhava man man namaskaru. Two lines. Arjuna, we have time. This is a beautiful topic. Man mana bhava, think of me. Where are you going with your baby? Come back here. <laughs> Very well. um, we're doing Ojas, Ojas Ayurvedic tomorrow night. Oh, yeah. Yes, take rest early. Are you eating properly? What are you eating? <laughs> no? Don't eat too much spicy food and all these things. No? Giving her some advice? Yeah, she's eating I eat all the time. I eat this this week. Did you become <laughs> pregnant? Is that one of the ladies? Yeah, that's the one you were talking about. Earlier. We were talking about you today. <laughs> Definitely good things. Should we tell him one time? <laughs> he was telling me today, two ladies, by changing their diet and eating all they became pregnant. And we're talking about what well, he didn't know it was you. Thank you. See, so eat carefully, the baby will be happy. Thank you. What's your name? Catalina. Yeah, Catalina. Take that book with you. Don't leave it. Okay. <laughs> what was I saying? There's a category. Yes, yeah, so Krishna says, Scripture's also many, many categories. So Krishna says, Madmana Bhava Bhava Always think of me. 
what does it mean to always think of Krishna? Who is doing it? That Bhagavad Gita not mention anything about that. Or how to come to that stage, Bhagavad Gita also not mention anything. So Bhagavad Gita is there, but beyond Bhagavad Gita is also other scriptures which go into more depth about these things. And everything we're talking tonight is come from the Bhagavatam. That is considered the top most scripture. If you read that, you'll never go back to any other. It says, no. when it says the Bhagavatam, you never go back, you don't have no interest in any other scripture again. Because only Bhagavatam give this taste like that. Other scriptures never give this type of taste. Scripture also many gradations. So I'm curious. Our guru's name is called Sadhguru, yes? Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. I never, I don't know too much about it. It's something I would little watch on YouTube. It's funny because Sadhguru means one that's never read the scriptures. <laughs> I don't think. It's the opposite of what you're saying. <laughs> Someone that's Achari Vam Purusham Veda, one who knows the old Veda, that is called Achari or Guru. And the Guru means who heard from his Guru. No? Sadhguru means one that's never read the scriptures. That's I never heard that. Sadhguru means sad, sad means true. True guru means he heard from his guru, otherwise how he could become a guru. Every guru must have a guru. Mm -hmm. How he's can born without, he's born with the name of... No one can be, even if it's true, still everyone must have a guru. Yes, I mean that's definitely a guru. Like Krishna, he's God, he's the source of all the Vedas. Still, when Krishna came to this world, he also took initiation from a guru to give example. You know Lord Ram? Mm -hmm. He also had a guru. Mm -hmm. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Nityananda, also. So everyone has guru. Even Hanuman has guru. Mm -hmm. Shiva has guru. Even Lord Brahma has a guru. Sadhguru has guru. Yes. He has a guru. But Sadhguru not mean no one who never heard the scriptures because the, the guru means one who explains all the scriptures. No? Disciple of any question of the scriptures, who will answer? <laughs> Someone who's read it who can explain it. Hmm. It says it's like a, it was like a downfall from his guru into him. So he hasn't literally studied in his physical life. Himself. I read of day and night reading. It's just, yeah. I, like you see, Madhu Sunamai, day and night reading. Day and night because so much taste. Hmm. Because these things, <laughs> I grew up day and night reading all her whole life. Day and night, day and night. Anyway, take it. Actually, there is a proof in scripture say that that person who has the same devotion for Guru and for Bhagavan, Sastra, the scriptures are revealed in his heart. But that person has the same devotion to Guru than to Krishna, okay? Yes, so the Kalabha. question is, where is his Guru? If he's not Guru, then how scriptures can be revealed in his heart? Mm. Yeah, he has a Guru. Who is Guru? No, what I'm saying, my question is, uh, so. you just said, because when I asked you, you know, do I need to read the scriptures to experience the highest state or the highest thing? And you said, yes, absolutely, you need to read the scriptures. Could they give all the guide, all the process, how to achieve that level? This also in the scriptures. I'm going to cook, but I never read a cookbook. Uh, you have to cookbook with right that. What about Giri? Huh? Giri, the scriptures Guru. Another thing. By serving also, even if one is illiterate, by serving and hearing everything one can get also. By serving and hearing. Yes, this is what I'm saying. Mm. That's exactly what I'm saying. But not that it's one recommendation to completely avoid scripture. No, no, but I just said the shocking thing is <coughs> the only way to... The For us, there is no other way, because where are you going to read? All these topics come from where? All come from the scriptures. So... But just you know, even as a, as a, as a, as a child, you know, like as a but scripture and describe all this how to get it scripture words of sadhu is not two things this is one thing anyway but if he comes to Grindavan and he serves guru there <laughs> he can hear but guru means he's always speaking these things yeah he's always speaking these topics anything else yes ma I mean, is it possible to achieve the highest state without being under a guru, but just reading the scripture yourself? Some knowledge will come, but realization will not come. Like, so I have to go. <laughs> see you tomorrow night? Yeah, see you later. Yeah, you. Tomorrow night is programming his restaurant. Probably yeah, no one will come, but anyway. <laughs> 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 I shouldn't be so negative, should I? I should have some. <laughs> Do you think that there is a, um, 
There's a chance, you know, when, you know, if you are, if you do, you know, read these scriptures, uh, that you can get lost in the intellect, and that this can become only just book, a story. Only thinking. book knowledge is be, not enough. This yeah. can be thinking. And book knowledge is not enough. Attached, thinking, thinking, but the experience of it. This is this was actually a good for me. That's question. When you say knowledge is the source of liberation, or this, you know. No, devotion is the source of liberation. Oh, okay. Right. So, you, so the 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 scriptures are are reading those scriptures are are a guide. But from those, I, I from, those, from those who have done it before, yeah, yeah. so that you can devote. Better. But that will, only book is not enough, of course. No yeah. way. Because then it just becomes like theory. Other, other, other religions, right? Where you're just quoting. It just become theory. Yes. Knowledge. And many, many things you cannot understand from book. That's why reading. Many no. things you cannot understand. That's why you need Someone Guru, because you have many questions, but who will kind of answer? Therefore, you need living Guru who will always answer these things. Yeah. But only book. Like we're reading. Today it's, rain, it's raining in Auckland, but I'm not going to get wetness by reading it. Mm -hmm. So, need association of high class sadhaka or high class person. Anything else? Yes. Matt, what's your hundred percent. This is oral. Put down into the scriptures and therefore analyze what other scriptures if there were many meetings. So in previous ages <coughs> there was no books. Because people had such power of memory. Like in the beginning of creation, Krishna spoke the Vedas to Brahma. Right? Then Brahma heard, realized that he spoke the scriptures to Nara. That's why Brahma is called Adi Guru, like the first Guru. So before we just spoken and hearing. But now in Kali Yuga, what's my name? Matt? Sorry. What's my name? You forgot already, right? So and now this present age of Kali Yuga, no one has any memory. So Krishna came in the one incarnation called Vyasadev. Have you heard of Vyasadev? Yeah. What did Vyasadev do? Scribe. Scribe. And who is his secretary? Ganesh. Ganesh was his secretary. Ganesh had some pride because Ganesh was most intelligent of all the devas. No? Because also elephants have good memory. No? So when Vyasa said, I will recite the scriptures, but I need a secretary, then Ganesh said, I'll do, but on one condition, if you stop speaking, I will disappear. Then Vyasa said, I have a condition also, you cannot write anything you don't understand. Oh. <laughs> but many people think Vyasa made the Vedas. No, Veda was there before he heard it from his Guru Nara. No. So in the beginning of Kali Yuga, 5,000 years ago, then Vyasa wrote, but what he wrote, what was already there? He not made anything. That is true. Therefore, even though we're talking about reading the scriptures, always you have to hear. Because hearing from devotee, hearing from realized soul, will always give more result than your dry reading by yourself. So Gurudev said, hear, then read, then you'll understand. Isn't it also um, integrating uh, some sort of practice into your, into your life? Yeah, what you read, you have to practice. Yeah. Right, but I'm also saying like meditation. Uh, you know, practice. Meditate on yeah. what? What's your goal of meditation? What's my goal? Uh, Self realization to to know to know myself. What's that? Who are you? S servant of Krishna. Mm -hmm. Servant, you are a servant, a loving <laughs> yeah. servant right, right. of Krishna. Yeah. So meditate on him. <laughs> no, no, no. This is no, no, this is this is all, this is all new to me. I'm, yeah. I'm, so I'm, how can they practice bhakti yoga with, after they leave here? Anyone? Remember Krishna? Very easy process. Yeah. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Ram, Hare Hare. Joe, are you free? You have any job, children? Nothing? <laughs> <laughs> My friend Mal, he wrote in his Facebook the other day, I want to join a call. I said, I'm coming in a week, don't worry. <laughs> And I said to him today, why you want to go, why you want to join a call? He said, what do you say? I want to know how it feels just to walk away from it. Anyway, you can always come back after a month. So we're inviting everyone to come to Brindavan mm -hmm. for a month. Come. Because we're here for that month. It's one month we'll hear. Here. We visit all the holy places for one month. Here. And one month we will hear. One month we will hear. And any? which month is that? You can come any month, but 
the special month is October. October 9th. Kartik. This is Kartik. 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 Month of Radharani. Krishna's most beloved, her name is Radhika. So this month is her month. She's the source of all love for Krishna. So unless you respect her, unless you worship her, how can you get love for Krishna? Okay. Radhakund, any question? Thank you for coming. We just we wrote your mother to this afternoon. We she forgot. sent me a text message at 1.30 in the afternoon and I, mm-hmm. and I had to race you. Her mother lives in our ashram there in Brindavan. Mm-hmm. She's the diehard fanatic. <laughs> <laughs> she has turned her back on children and husband in Australia and she lives there permanently. <laughs> Anything else? So try some steps. Why not vegetarian? No. Well, you know, the funny thing is, I've just moved into a house mm-hmm. where everyone's vegan, so it's got to be a sign. <laughs> There's no, to nothing die. in the fridge. There's no meat in the fridge, so it's got to be a sign. So why make an extraneous effort? <laughs> oh, exactly. Start exactly. today. <laughs> make vow. I never touch this. <laughs> Gayatri, still vegetarian? Yes, more than for 18 years now. Good for you. Grandmother feels some happiness after all. My grandmother ate meat though. <laughs> oh, so that's the secret. Uh, what's your surname? Mudalia. Huh? Mudalia. Oh, Any questions from the people? Are you vegetarian? Yes. Mother? Anyone else? <laughs> Anthony? <laughs> Anthony? <laughs> Why don't you try it? Try it for a month, you'll never go back. If you give up meat for a month, you'll never go back. Can I just say what my son just complimented me a few days ago? Mom, your vegetarian meals are so tasty. <laughs> Everything you cook is so tasty. Not like, you know, those replacements. So, and I'm teaching him to, to eat vegetarian. Proper vegetarian yeah. cooking, you'll never go back. Yeah. Okay, so try and be vegetarian. Joe is vegetarian? There's no such thing. <laughs> 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 my niece said that to me. Come on. <laughs> you believe in reincarnation? Oh, no, actually, okay. You believe in the soul, right? I'm not sure about that. Okay. <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> this body is dead, right? This body is made of atoms. Atoms have no life, no consciousness. So, where does consciousness come from? Why a dead body has no consciousness? I think it's to do with the finite physics. Electricity is material. Electricity is not conscious. This is soul. Right? I believe more in the one soul. Huh? I believe more in the atma side of one. Uh, You are an atma. (laughs) But you're not the supreme atma. I feel feel like everyone's actually the supreme atma. That is true. We are part. No doubt. We come from there, where else we come from? No. So relationship is there. No, <sighs> no reincarnation. Mm. Do you have children? No. May I ask your age? You can more or less. 30, right? 30, 40, 40. Right. So where were you 45 years ago? You cannot say you did not exist before no. this body. I think my mother's and, and before that? <laughs> <laughs> you existed before. Soul was there. Different body. Like you go home and change clothes, but you don't change. No? <coughs> every seven years, all the cells in our body change, right? So you're changing bodies every seven years. This is reincarnation. Reincarnation means changing body. You, you change cars, you change clothes, but you don't change. No? So this next so According to your activities, you've been given a particular body. Now what you're doing now is making your next body. So if you keep eating chicken, Joe, what's going to happen to you? I don't eat chicken. Fish. Keep eating fish, where will you go? <laughs> what will be your next body? You'll get what you deserve. What do you deserve? Liberation. If you're eating fish, you don't deserve liberation. <laughs> you will get bondage. Karma means the result of action. So if eating, doing bad things, how can you get happiness? You will have to suffer. That will be the cause of you accepting another material body. Did you say good and bad things? Mm. Huh? 
would say good and bad things, sure. where we just we just labeling and dividing. What is no good and cause distress and pain to others is always bad. But eating is bad. Hmm? Mm-hmm. So. Bhagavad Gita Krishna says, who eats for himself, eats only pop, sin. So, all spinach, potatoes, all fruits and vegetables, who owns them? Where they come from? But there's no eating without butter. There's no eating without killing. Well, you haven't heard about Krishna, have you? <laughs> so we believe every action has fault. No? So that by cooking and offering to Krishna, that becomes pure. So it's how you. And who you cook, how you cook. Who you cook for? Uh, who you eat for? Yes. If you cook for Krishna, who you eat for? Yeah. Krishna. Krishna. If you're eating for Krishna, who are you washing the pots for? Who are you shopping for? Who are you earning money for? Uh, 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 Whose house is it? Uh-huh. Devotee and non-devotee is no great difference externally, but internal difference is there. Arjuna has to fight. What did Krishna say to Arjuna? Fight. But remember me. This is it's very good. This is it should be another probably yes. for another discussion. But violence and the, sometimes the necessity for violence. Violence has its place. Mm. Like if, if someone was hurting your children, would you kill them? Totally. Definitely. I think that violence is correct and proper. Again, it's not necessarily the action, but how you do it, right? Intention must be good. Mm. Everything has its place. Everything has its place. But in saying that, right? So this is another Here we thing. go, suicide bomber. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, 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 right? Exactly, right? The intention is the intention is I'm gonna make the world a better place, so I'm gonna kill everybody that I define as Question what benefit for the suicide bomber and what benefit for those who killed? No benefit for anyone. I deeply believe that someone is evil, a group of people is evil, that the world will be a better place. By removing them. That's not my job. Supreme Lord will take care of that. They also have right to live. What if I do that in the service of Krishna? Therefore, Scripture must be there. Scripture says what you can and cannot do for his service. Just like I was a diabetic and you make ch- chocolate mousse for me. It's, it's a service, but it's getting, it's useless because it won't. I so don't say. If someone wants to do that. But it's, therefore, Scripture must be there. No? Hmm? Scripture describes what can and cannot be done for the service of the Supreme Lord. Therefore, Scripture gives guidance to us. No? <laughs> you need to read it, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Just buy the book and shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Therefore, it said there's a verse, Shruti Smriti Puranadi Pancharati. Anything you do which is like against the scripture does not give you the goal of devotion and just cause disturbance to society. Therefore, scripture give help, give God, give guidance. No? This is acceptable. This you can do. Krishna accept this and Krishna don't accept that. Like, can I offer chicken to Krishna? Yes. Why? No, he never eat it because he's vegetarian. You may do something for what Krishna. What if all you have is chicken? Huh? What if all you have to get is chicken? Then don't offer it. <laughs> Let the chicken live. <laughs> Give him freedom. There is only who we have always been, which is eternal, never born, never died, and spiritual. And that's where Krishna resides. He doesn't come to here and be tainted by any of the material universes, only spiritual. Well spoken. Therefore, he is pure. My question was, and for us it's not necessarily the action that matters, but to, how you do it. To, to become but both not. So if you can offer chicken with devotion. No, he still no. won't take it, because if you had devotion, you wouldn't offer chicken. It's a dead, it's a dead animal. <laughs> you have to look at it logically. There's, look, everything, ha- I'll tell you yeah, one okay, story. Okay. This is good story, bad story, I don't know, but I'll tell it anyway. <laughs> what is good and bad? No. Ultimately, a bad thing may become good also. And sometimes, what is Dharma? Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, no? what is Dharma? What is our Dharma? Very hard. Sometimes your religion becomes religion, and religion becomes your religion. It depends on circumstance. No? Like. What's your name, madam? Sometimes even religion may become an obstacle to devotion. Even religion will become an obstacle to devotion. Even so-called good qualities like truthfulness may also become an obstacle sometimes. 
want to hear the story? Yeah, I have too many questions. This is the thing. Like, I, yeah. I seriously, I'm genuinely curious. You know, yeah, we'll tomorrow one. night, there's all yes. I'm teaching, so I can't. <laughs> there's a famous story in Bhagavad Gita, right? During the war of Mahabharata, Krishna not take place in the fighting. Because God is neutral at the end of the day. He's neutral to everyone. So he became Krishna's Uber driver, like chariot driver. Oh. <laughs> so on the other side of the war was the general Durya, uh, Drishta, no, what was his name? Yeah. Aswatthana's yeah. father, Dronacharya. He was like the guy, the general on the other side. As long as Dronacharya is fighting, there can be no victory. Practically speaking, no one could kill him. He could only desire, when he desired to die, you can kill him. So Krishna know this secret. No? So during the war, the Krishna knows we have to somehow break his enthusiasm for fighting. If he give up fighting, then he can be killed, otherwise not. This is funny. Sometimes I tell the story and everyone walks out, but it's okay. I'm taking <laughs> it. Because many people just think good, bad, but they cannot think what is beyond good or bad. Yeah, Hang on, just let me finish the story, is, yeah. then you'll understand. <laughs> so, Duryodhana was a Brahmin. Oh. Not Duryodhana, what's his name? Dronacharya was a Brahmin. Brahmin should never work or fight or anything. But because of his son, he was so poor he could not give milk to his son. For that reason, he became engaged in fighting and military service. Krishna knew this secret. So, as the fighting was going on, you know the story? Mm -hmm. Then Krishna called out. What's his name? Aswatthama. Aswatthama's father. Dronacharya. Just remind me again. Dronacharya. Krishna called out in the middle of the war. Dronacharya, why are you fighting? Your son, Aswatthama, has been killed. But then, he, what I'm fighting for? My son is dead. No need to fight. He'll give up fighting. So he, be, he began shaking. My son is dead. What I'm doing? And he knows Krishna is very tricky. <laughs> <coughs> Krishna can do anything for a devotee because love. So, just to do that. No, I'm telling you. <laughs> he knew this about Krishna's nature. No? What is good and bad for Krishna? He is the all good. So, whatever he do, that is good. So, he doubt Krishna's words. Maybe I cannot believe fully because his nature has so much affection to the devotees. So, no, I'm telling you. He asked Yudhisthira. Is it true, Yudhisthira, my son is dead? Yudhisthira never tell a lie a whole life. Even his enemies call him Dharmaraj, like the king of religion. Even his enemies respect him like that. It's so pure, never lie, never cheat, nothing, no desire. So he will tell the truth always. So, Dharmaraj, he said, is it true, Yudhisthira, my son is dead? Then Yudhisthira, whole life, he never lied. Then Krishna, you look at Krishna, and Krishna's like, <laughs> how do we do this too? <laughs> you tell him his son is dead. But I, you tell him his son is dead. My desire, you tell him. But you just you think, come on, how can I lie? I never lie. Whole life, I never lie. Again and again, Krishna's like, <laughs> what if I was not dead? Again and again, Krishna indicates, you tell him his son is dead. But you just hear hesitate. So finally, his brother was watching this. You just hear hesitation. So his name was Bhim. He killed a huge elephant. That elephant's name was also Aswatthama. So he held up his club covered by elephant brains. I have killed Aswatthama. Then he began shaking. Is it true? Is it true? That time you just yeah, seeing Krishna's desire, but still he hesitated. Yes, yes, it's true. Aswatthama, <laughs> the elephant, has been killed. But when <laughs> Aswatthama <coughs> has been, but when he said that, Krishna blew his conch. Uh. So what did <laughs> Dronacharya hear? Yes, yes, it's true. Aswatthama <laughs> has been killed. The elephant and everything he not heard. So he sat in, he gave up fighting, sat in meditation, his head was See, he fell from religion. He lied. 
but those who really know religion do not know why he fell from religious principles. Religious principles means what Krishna wants, just do that. Please, Krishna, that is religion. Because he hesitated to... His religion, his religious principles became an obstacle to his devotion. And he hesitated to give up an inferior religious aspect for a higher aspect. For that reason, he fell from religion. So anyway, I'll just say that to confuse you more. <laughs> so what ultimately is the real truth? What is the real good? What pleased Krishna? That is the real good. That is the real truth. How do you know? What please? How do you know what pleases? Just true? act now according to your present standard. That will be proper. I try and adopt something which I'm beyond, which is beyond me. Then you'll fall. So anyway, just start by becoming vegetarian. <laughs> Don't drink. You're drinking and smoking. No. No little puffing on the old marawaki? Uh, sometimes. Yes, here we go. <laughs> no, <laughs> Dig no, deeper. No, no, Try and give up all these horrible, useless habits, which have no benefit for anyone. Vegetarian, no alcohol, tobacco. No. If you want sex life, try and be one woman, just accept one woman. Stability, some purity of mind, purity of action. And from that you can build something. Okay? Where's Shikshamrita? We have one book. Please take. We have another class tomorrow night at Ojas. Okay, after we can do that. We have another class tomorrow night. Would you come? One person say, Gatri, please just lie to me. I will come. I will come tomorrow. <laughs> so we have one program tomorrow at Ojas. And if you want to come, 4 o'clock. And um, if you want to come to Kartik, if you want to come to India, we can, you can take my email. How old are your children? 14 More than old enough. Come. Hare Krishna, so this Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Oh Krishna, I want, to do, I want to serve you. This is one service to Krishna. So we should chant with a feeling, I am giving happiness to you. I am giving, yes, I am serving him. I do not want anything else except his happiness. If this feeling is... name, fame, or prestige, this will not, you will not achieve the result very quickly. TK, any questions, Mal? Yeah. Happy customer? Yeah. Ready to sign up? Why did you come to India? Not off the cards. Right. Or come to the Gold Coast? You're not working now, if your situation now, come to the Gold Coast. Come to Cairns. We'll be there. Cairns will be nice. You like? We'll be there for ten days. You can meet my sister, but hands off. <laughs> <laughs> She's married anyway. I, had such a <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was the only reason he was my friend. Now I'm finding out. <laughs> but he's her husband's an uncle Rilla. <laughs> Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare Rama.